Hey, I'm back. It's been a busy week and I haven't had much time to get any content together, but I'm back and today we're gonna to kick things off by taking a look at how to wirelessly tether your camera using the CamFi Pro Plus thing. <laughs> So of course you can skip ahead if you want to, but just as a quick little backstory for this video, uh, a while back I did some videos talking about how to kind of wirelessly tether with your Canon 5D Mark IV using only the built-in Wi-Fi and either you know the uh, Canon app on the iPad or iPhone or you know using the Canon software on the computer with some other settings that maybe can let you kind of work together with Lightroom or Capture One, but there were a lot of downsides to it no matter which way you had it set up the mobile app for the iPad or the iPhone doesn't automatically refresh when you're shooting. So if you're using it for clients, that's kind of a deal breaker. The computer software was really slow and really just a hassle to get set up. So again, a lot of downsides to that and pretty much all of those are solved with this Cam5 Pro Plus. I'll show some B-roll over this as I'm talking and explaining kind of the different things that this is capable of and how it works and everything like that uh, because I'm terrible at doing things and talking at the same time, so forgive me for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty of what this is and what you can expect from it. So again, what I have here is the Cam5 Pro Plus and I believe the only difference with the Plus model is that it will allow for third-party tethering as well, which we'll get into in just a minute, but there are pros and cons to that as well. So we'll talk about those details later in this video. However, this will just sit on top of your camera's hot shoe, or you could also use the uh, screw thread on the bottom to screw it into the side of something like this optional L bracket, and this will screw into the bottom of your camera. And you'll have the module, CamFi module on the side here. If you want to keep your hot shoe available for like a flash trigger, for example, if you're in the studio. Um, otherwise, it just connects to your camera via USB, and there are a few USB cables included. They say it's compatible with over 500 cameras, so that's really great for a lot of users on the market that don't have Wi-Fi built into their camera. Um, or even, again, with Canon's built-in Wi-Fi, some cameras are crippled in what they can actually do over that Wi-Fi connection. But this will work with over 500 cameras on the market, which is great. I have it on the 5D Mark IV here, and it's been working perfectly for me. Um, and we'll go again into the details of some of the specs, the speed and things like that in just a minute. This does also come with a USB cable to charge the unit itself. And they say the battery in here should last you about three hours. Honestly, I haven't run it down to nothing yet while I was out on a shoot. So it seems to have a pretty decent battery life in terms of realistic use. However, the battery itself is replaceable. You can remove it from here. It's not built in in a way that you can't have access to it. And I believe it's just a cell phone battery, uh, which you should be able to get your hands on and replace that if you want to. Um, and otherwise, on the body of this, you just have the input for that charging cable. You have a power switch. Uh, you have a little mini kind of toothpick type button to reset this if anything goes wrong. And you have a couple of LED status lights on the top. So in terms of what it can actually do for you, I think some of the things that most people are going to be concerned with talking about, you know, tethering or especially wirelessly tethering is how fast is it? How reliable is the connection? And how does it integrate with software like Capture One and Lightroom? So let's go into those topics one by one. So starting off with transfer speeds, using the iPad and Cam5 software on the iPad, transfer speeds for full size, full resolution raw photos took an average of about 10 seconds to show up full screen, and JPEGs came in at around two or three seconds. And I found that from there, if you lower the quality or the resolution of the JPEGs, really didn't affect it all that much. I think there's a limitation of the app itself because there is a second or two from when the image comes into the app and you can see it in your library to when it has actually displayed full screen. So I think that kind of limits the speed that those JPEGs can come in at, but still two or three seconds is going to be more than enough if you're giving your iPad to a client, for example, if you're out in the field and your client just wants to look at the framing and composition and maybe the expression if you're shooting portraits, for example, the actual raw photos are not going to matter to them. So sending the full resolution, full quality JPEGs to your iPad is going to be more than fast enough, I think, for your client to get an idea of those things that they're going to be looking for. Switching over to the MacBook Pro is where things actually got pretty interesting for me because I was honestly a little bit pleasantly surprised with the results here. Using CamFi's own software on the MacBook Pro, raw transfers were about seven to eight seconds and JPEGs took about the same as with the iPad, around two or three seconds. And again, I think that transfer speed for the JPEGs is limited by that software because it works the same way on the computer. Um, however, 
When I switched over to using the third party tether option, I expected to have a little bit of a slowdown there because you know, you have to go through the middleman kind of, it's not just directly connected to Capture One. However, I actually got faster transfer times using Capture One. Transferring full size, full resolution raw photos into Capture One took me under five seconds to display full screen, which is really, really impressive because that's really not a lot of a difference from being physically connected with a USB cable. And you have the added convenience of being wireless. So that is a huge, huge surprise for me. I really expected things to slow down when I went into that third party tether option. And even in Capture One, JPEG sped up a little bit too. I had under two seconds for JPEG transfers, again, to display full screen in Capture One. So either way, whether you're working with JPEGs or if you want to transfer those full size raw photos directly into Capture One, you can expect pretty strong and fast results here. So I was very impressed with that. And I think it's very, very usable because of that. It's not a workaround so much as just a wireless option. Now, all of these tests that I've talked about up until now are using Camfy's own uh, created kind of hotspot, the Wi-Fi connection from the CamFi itself, which means that you do have to actually connect your iPad or your computer to the CamFi, which means that your actual web browsing ability is going to be cut off. So there is the option, both using the iPad and also using your computer to kind of use a bridge connection where you can connect both the CamFi and your computer or your iPad to your existing Wi-Fi network. And in that case, you can retain that web browsing capability. But I found that, you know, depending again on your actual Wi-Fi network speed, things did slow down a bit there. When I was using my own home network, uh, depending on whether I was using the iPad or the computer, things slowed down to about half or one third of the speed there. So one other thing to note here is that if you are using the CamFi app on the iPad or on the computer, you are able to also save your images to the SD card as well as transferring them to the app wirelessly. So you have that backup there. If anything happens, if your battery dies, if your connection drops out for whatever reason, you still have that backup on your SD card. But if you switch over to third party tethering to capture one, for example, you're not going to have that because capture one does not allow that. So if you're in some kind of situation where you really don't want to risk losing any images, then you might want to think about using the CamFi app, which is a great app. It works well. Um, but if you want to have that, you know, increased speed, if you want to be able to adjust your raw images as they come in, like you can typically do with Capture One when you're tethered, then, you know, just be aware that you're not going to be able to save those images to your SD card. And if anything happens, you're going to lose those images. So you might want to be a little bit more careful. So next up is the connection reliability or of course the working distance and uh, I haven't been able to actually push this to the limits outdoors just yet because of weather and just a whole bunch of other stuff that's been going on but I will before I publish this video and I'll put some results on screen now but when I was testing this in my home uh, just with some open doors but you know walls in the way kind of um, not a direct line of sight not a perfectly straight direct line of sight I could get up to about 20 meters or 60 or 70 feet away before the connection dropped out um, and considering there are walls in the way and everything, I think that's a pretty good performance as much as I could expect, to be honest with you. If you're out in open conditions, though, you should be able to get better results. And they do rate it at a higher distance in those kind of ideal conditions. So um, everything else has worked just fine for me in a room or in a studio where I don't have those interferences. I haven't had any problems with the connection dropping out or anything like that. The connection has been rock solid otherwise. So don't think you have anything to worry about there. So next up is onto the software and just how well it kind of integrates with other software. And I've already touched on that a little bit in this video, but CamFi does have their own software for the iPad, the iPhone, the computer and other mobile devices. And across all of them, it's pretty much the same in terms of appearance and function. Um, so if you are familiar with one, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same story on another device, which is really great. And the software itself is actually really quite good. The most important thing for me is that when you take photos, you can have them pop up on screen automatically each time you take a new photo. So if you're handing this to a client again in the field, you don't have to have them fiddling with things, backing out to the library and choosing the new photo every time you take a new photo. This is going to be perfect for that kind of situation, which is really, really a big plus over something like Canon's own software. Otherwise, there's quite a lot you can do in the app. You can't really tweak raw photos as far as I can tell, but you can do a lot in terms of controlling your camera. You can take photos, start and stop recording. You can switch um, modes from video mode to photo mode. You can change the settings like ISO, shutter speed, things like that from the app. And it works just fine as far as I can tell. The app itself also doesn't really seem to have any bugs that I can find. It's only crashed on me once um, and it opened up again almost immediately. It didn't take me a lot of time to get things connected again. It really was ready to go in a 
a matter of seconds. So um, the app itself really seems to be very well developed and have a lot of good functionality to it. On the computer side of things, they do have two apps. Actually, one of those apps will be, you know, if you want to use it as the app itself to tether with the app directly. The other is if you want to turn on third party tethering. And really, it is just a little window that pops up and you can see some information on there, but there's really not a lot to it. You just click that you want to turn on that third party tethering option. And then once you get things connected, you can just X out of it and have it, you know, disappear from your screen. So it really looks like you're just tethered straight to your third party software like Capture One, which is what I've been using it with. And that's really all there is to it. It works perfectly. If you have any problems with getting things connected, I found that just turning things off and on really, it's the most typical solution to any problem, but it really does work just fine. Just turn things off and on and then it will show up no problem. But otherwise it's been very, very easy to get things connected. Just turn this on and then you will see it pop up in your Wi-Fi networks, connect to that and start the software, whether you're using Camfi's own software or the other program that will let you tether to Capture One or Lightroom or something like that. If you're going back and forth between different ways of using this, for example, between third party tethering with, you know, Capture One and Camfi's own software, just remember that you have to turn off third party tethering before you go back to Camfi's app. Otherwise, things won't show up there. So if you're wondering why things are not connecting, why things are not showing up there, double check your third party tethering option, make sure it's turned off and then you'll be able to connect to their app, no problem. But just if you're going back and forth, that's something you might need to be aware of because I have forgot to do that and I was really confused for about five or 10 minutes until I figured out uh, I just have to turn that off and then things worked fine. One of my biggest complaints about this has just been that it takes a little bit of time to get started up. It's basically like a Wi-Fi router. When you turn the Wi-Fi router on, it's not gonna immediately be ready to connect to. You know, it takes a little bit of time for that Wi-Fi network to get going, you know, and it's the same case here. When you turn the power on, it takes about 40 seconds for it to be ready to connect to. After that, it's fine, but just the initial startup does take a little bit of time and that can be a little bit annoying if you know you're kind of impatient like I am, but just be aware of it and it's no problem at all. One other very nitpicky complaint that I have is just that these USB cables that it comes with to connect to the camera are a little bit short. Um, and depending on the direction that it connects to, like for example, with the 5D Mark IV here, the cable kind of sticks out a bit in the back just because of the direction that it has to connect to those USB ports. And you can use it with another USB cable if you want to. Like if you want to mount this on a camera cage and it's a little bit further away, you're gonna need a little bit of a longer cable. It's just a USB cable, so you can use any USB cable. But if you wanna look through the viewfinder or something like that, it might be a little bit annoying. Otherwise, I've really, really loved this and I could not recommend it more if you're looking for a way to wirelessly tether your camera, which if you're watching this video, I assume that you are. Um, it's been really, really easy to use, easy to get set up, whether you're using Camfi's own software or third-party software like Capture One. It's been fast. Again, what, whatever software you're using in Camfi's own software, you have tons of options to make it faster or to make it higher quality, depending on your situation. It's really, really flexible in terms of being able to use it with their software or with whatever software you prefer, like Capture One or Lightroom. And you can use it with an iPad, you can use it with a computer. And it really is easy to to do. It's fast to set up. Besides the startup time, it's fast to get connected. It's easy to get connected. The bottom line is it's compatible with a huge number of cameras. It's consistent and reliable as far as I can tell over these past few weeks where I've really been putting it through its paces as hard as I can. And their software is pretty much bug free, which is rare. So everything from the software to the hardware, it's all top notch. It all works really great. And I have very few, if any complaints, I really pushed myself to put a couple of complaints in here just because I wanted to be as fair and balanced as I could, but I could not recommend this more. If you're thinking about it, pull the trigger. This is absolutely a winning, winning product here. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below and I will definitely get back to you. If you like this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.